let's go back in time. Let's go 22 years ago, 1991. Now, I'm six years old at this point. I've been playing with the computers for the best part of a year, playing different games. Not many stuck in my memory as being amazing games that I can actually remember. Before that, the Commodore 64 was a big part of my life, but I was a little bit too young to really remember anything that I saw. Mainly it was me watching my brother play on the Commodore 64. But by 91, I'd started to develop a real taste for computer games, for PC games. Now, all the games that I'm going to talk about in this part are PC games. There was no console games whatsoever because I was brought up as a PC gamer. I didn't have any consoles, didn't need any consoles when I had the PC. So, in 1991, the, the game that really caught my attention was Civilization. That's Sid Meier's Civilization, the first Civilization. This game came out in 1991. Uh, it was created by Sid Meier and Bruce Shelley for Micropose. Now, this game, graphically, was quite poor, really. 1991 standards, it was pretty good for 1991, but in, in general, if you were looking back at it now, it definitely has not aged very well at all. But back then, it was a beautiful game. I was young, though, at the time. Six years old. I wasn't particularly... Actually, I would have been seven in the late 1991 when this game came out, so I was seven. So my understanding of the game was quite difficult because it is a complicated game. There's no doubt about it. It is technically a 4X game or a turn-based strategy, some people may argue. Now, if you don't know what civilization is and you've been living under the rock for the past 20 years and you've never played a Civilization game, let me just try and give you a synopsis. Civilization is a turn-based single or multiplayer game, strategy game. Um, you take the role of a civilization, you build your towns and you build the cities, you build in those cities, you build units to try and defend and attack other civilizations, and your goal really is to last the, the, the time limit or generally destroy everyone else or reach a scientific end um, my main goal in this game was the fact that you could build yourself a little castle every time you do something really good in the game you could build yourself a part of your castle for me that was probably the best bit about the game personally because all that's that's really my main kind of focus when it comes to actually you know thinking of when I used to play the game it was always the castle that kind of sprung out. So that's Civilization. That's 91. We'll move on to a game that was on the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. But this one was specifically played on the PC. That is Laser Squad. Now this game came out in 92. It's another turn-based game. But it's more tactics. It's, it's similar to XCOM. Um, but I played Laser Squad. Now Laser Squad... Um, is a turn-based tactic war game where the player um, tries to complete objectives uh, using tactics, using the ability to move your characters around the map and destroy the people that you're supposed to be destroying uh, and collecting information and all that sort of stuff. There are several missions on the game um, uh, Six, I think. I, I I think five, maybe maybe six. Um, my memory doesn't serve me very well on that. All I can remember about this game is the cutscenes before the missions. They kind of scared me for a while, because at this time I was only seven, going on eight. So it was quite a. I mean, there were it's, it was quite a daunting process. You know, trying to pl play these games. I mean, it was quite nerve-wracking. I, I had to gather a lot of courage to play this game. Which was, you know, now you look back at it and you think, why? Why did I find this, you know, a, a scary or whatever? 
that's Laser Squad. Um, I, this is one of my probably all, all time favourite games, one of. Uh, it, it has the most nostalgia for me, and, and generally, because probably it made me a lot scared, it made me remember quite a lot of vivid memories of the game, especially the uh, cutscenes. So, but let's move on. During Laser Squad's time of '92, another game out g game came out called Sensible Soccer. A lot of you may remember this game if you uh, are in the same kind of age range as I am. Uh, it came out on the Amiga, came out on the Atari S, and it came out on the PC. When I say PC, I mean MS DOS PC, because Windows '95 hadn't even been created then. Windows, what was? It? 3.1 was it 3.1 I don't know at the time Windows hadn't have been really created obviously we didn't have a version of it because where I used to live not many people had PCs full stop let alone uh, operating systems but um, Sensible Soccer came out and there's nothing really remarkable about, remarkable about um, Sensible Soccer all I remember much about is just playing it quite often good little game, very nostalgic um, one game that kind of was really kind of, kind of stood out at me was the um, was the next game that I, that's on the list this game I remember alongside Street Fighter 2 for the PC is Mortal Kombat it came out in, in the end of 1992 so I was 8 years old 8 years old when I was playing Mortal Kombat for the first time that's quite a I mean, Mortal Kombat was a gory game even back in '92, so probably broke a few copyright, uh, not copyright laws, but age certificate um, laws. But you can't really do me now, can you guys? Um, Mortal Kombat for me was was beautiful. My favourite characters has been Scorpion and always probably will be Scorpion, purely for his uh, get over here thing. Um, there's not much else to say on Mortal Kombat, or all that you know. I played a lot of it and enjoyed a lot of it. So next on the list is probably the most important game of them all in this first part. This game is called Doom. Now, many of you will know of Doom. It's really not important what Doom is about because there's no point even me telling you about it because 99%, 99.999% of you will know what Doom is because it's probably one of the biggest games ever created in the 90s. It was released at the end of 93. I remember getting a, um, a freeware version of it which allowed you to play the first... Um, Eight levels, nine levels. First, first, the first, get the first um, part of the first nine levels. That's it. The first nine levels of the game. Now, the first thing I can remember about this game is the music. The music was just amazing, absolutely fantastic. It blew me away, and the game itself really blew me away. You have to remember, in '93, the end of '93, I would have been eight years old. Yeah, eight years of age. So the game kind of imprinted on me slightly because ever since that time, probably once or twice a month, I will have a dream that is completely doom, just doom in general. And it scares me a lot. It still scares me to this day, these dreams, because these dreams all involve dead things and shooting and blowing up and being very, and the way I felt when I first played this game back in 1993 on top of that it's also an overriding memory of watching this game and the first kind of multiplayer aspects of PC gaming which I'd never seen before um, I used to watch my brother play it quite a lot this and Doom 2 specifically which I'll get on to a little bit later but this game, my brother would bring his friends around. My brother's five years older than me, so he he was at the age he was thirteen at the time. So he was at the age, well, twelve actually, technically. Um, 
he was at the age where he would bring his friends over and his friends would bring their computers over and you'd have to create this kind of actual network and it was it was difficult to work out even back in the 90s when it wasn't such a massive thing to do but I can remember them playing together and enjoying their time and playing until all hours of the more all hours of the morning you know I'd wake up in the morning after going to bed at a normal hour and find them playing you know still playing the night after and I was I always regretted not being able to stay up for that that was the problem with me being eight years old at a time when this game come, come out but I do remember playing a lot of it and I do remember playing um, enough of it to make me dream about it pretty much for the last 20 odd years you know that's doom that's doom for you if any of you've played doom it, it, it kind of imprints on you just because it's such a revolutionary game as far as I'm concerned now next up on the list is something a little less um, massive and that's the NASCAR racing game which came out in 94 I've always liked this game purely because it was a change of pace from everything else like Doom and um, various other games. But, the, you know, I enjoyed this game. A lot of time was spent playing this game, usually trying to crash into the cars and going around the, the track backwards and watching the replays. But, you know, that's just the way it was back in the, back in the day. So let's move on to Doom 2, which came out literally a year later, September the 30th. So, sorry, October the 10th, 94, I'm reading, obviously. Um, I don't remember exactly the day when it came out. All I remember is that my brother came home very happy one day and Doom 2 was loaded onto the computer using floppy disks, which uh, don't really exist anymore these days. Um, and from then, it was another massive Doom fest for a long time, for a very long time. Doom 2 is probably one of the only franchises or the only games which is better than the original now I say that with um, bated breath because I know many of you will, have, will know of other sequels that were better than the originals I'm not saying that it don't exist but this is probably one of the first in its day where I think personally that this game was an improvement on the original you know there was more variety a few, couple more weapons a lot more maps you know generally a very big game next on the list um, the same sort of time just a year after Doom 2 1995 was a game called Transport Tycoon Deluxe now you guys may have seen me play this game before the open um, source edition of this game but that game was based on this game that I'm talking about Transport Tycoon Deluxe uh, made by um, Microprose or published by Microprose developed by Chris Sawyer um, it's a beautiful game I absolutely love this game one of my all-time favorites is always it's always going to be on the list um, it, it shows that it's on the list because of the fact that I've played it recently like you know the open source version of the game which pretty much I um, complete the same basically um, just with updated graphics and well not updated graphics but updated mods and stuff that you can get to it I mean if you were interested in that sort of game, then visit the link in the des description because it's definitely worth playing. Um, but the reason this game... I don't know why I loved it so much. Because I was probably not even 10 when this game came out. So, I mean, I didn't really understand what I was supposed to be doing. All I knew is that it had trains and it had little uh, buses and little trucks and little little planes and such and that just you know it took my took my breath away and I loved every minute of it uh, I can remember leaving my PC on all night so I could get further into the future um, so when I came down you know came into my room the next morning and put on um, turn the screen on I could see that they'd the game had been forwarded you know 20 years or whatever it is and um it was it's amazing. I, I have a lot of fond memories 
let's just put it that way, fond memories of Transport Tycoon Deluxe is um, something that would lead me on for pretty much ever since and the game is Championship Manager 2 now not many of you people may know about this game this game was a football management game you may have heard of um, Football Manager that, come, that came out a few a, a year or so back Football Manager 12 and all that 13 and all that sort of stuff the, this, this game Championship Manager 2 is the first one that I ever bought. It's the first one that I ever played. It came out in the end of '95. Um, it kind of led me on the the, the track of going through um, championship, being a football manager game in, from the rest up until now, basically. Um, probably one of the best championship manager games ever, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it was quite a slow game. You, it required quite a lot of time and patience, and in a way, it kind of um, took a lot of skill. You had to buy the right players, and you had to be the right team, and you had to do all kinds of different things that you never have seen in the game before this game came out. Um, yes, graphically, it didn't look amazing, and 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 it just generally didn't, you know. It didn't sparkle for a lot of people, but for me, it was a fantastic game, and that's why it is beautiful as far as I'm concerned. Now, that's the final game to cover in this first part. Uh, stay tuned for the next part, which is going to cover quite a lot of games um, from '96 onwards, basically. Um, thank you very much for listening and watching, and see you next time.